You're listening to DraftKings Network. Today's episode is powered by Venmo and PayPal. Look, no matter how your favorite team did this season, there's still one way to feel like a winner, and that's with Venmo and PayPal. That's because you can choose to use Venmo or PayPal to add money to DraftKings in a few taps. You can even transfer your balance if you have one. So the next time you get paid back for dinner, drinks, or tickets to the game, you've got the option to put the money right back into your DraftKings account. Hundreds of millions of people use Venmo and PayPal already, and there's never been a better time to join them. Don't have a Venmo or PayPal account yet? Don't sweat it. Choose your way to pay and download the app to get started. Venmo and PayPal are not valid deposit withdrawal methods in Connecticut or Ontario. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Pulling up to Mickey D's just for drinks? Oh yeah, that's me. Nothing extra, just perfection and a straw. Coming in hot for the coldest cups on the block. Because there are drinks. Then there are drinks from McDonald's. Mix things up with any size lemonade or sweet tea for $1.49. Perfect with our classic fries. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. This is the Dan Lebator Show with the Stugats Podcast. I have mentioned that these grid of death punishments make doing the show more difficult. And the one I'm presently wearing <laughs> is difficult for a number of different reasons. Uh-huh. My mask is tight in all the wrong places. I have uh, hair underneath. I don't know that it's clear from what I'm wearing that I'm Nacho Libre because you're evidently he usually didn't wear the mask. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also, my nipples are showing. It, yep. is, it is really cold in here. And furthermore, uh, the pants are really tight in a way that's uncomfortable. And I don't want anyone to see what's going on down with the pants. Like, I'm going to have to conceal that throughout the show. And as an added bonus, I can't wear my glasses with a wrestler's mask on. So I can't read any of my notes or anything that I've that I've written down. But let's be honest. You love this. I mean, you do. You love it. Uh, Someone I, described you as giddy earlier yeah. when they saw you kind of prance like to dress through the up. office yeah. to your studio. Uh, that is uh, falsehoods. Uh, like that is not it, it's not true in any way. There's not I, I I came through like you could have seen the shame on me covering my nipples with my hands. There there was no giddy on coming through here with this punishment. You honestly look fantastic. You do. Yeah. yeah. Surprisingly I chiseled. Mean, I mean, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't stop looking. That's I want to take a consensus. I want to take a vote. Do you guys think Dan likes this? Like, right, show of hands for the people who think Dan okay. does like this. Yes, let's do the joke of whether Dan gets annoyed or not by falsehoods. <laughs> That's not a joke we've ever done before. <laughs> let's do that one. I agree, though, with you. Look you look good, man. I agree that he, uh, he rarely wears the mask, so I'm cool with you just being shirtless with the cape on. Well, the cape is also uncomfortable. The tassels fit in all the wrong spots. Does anyone know that with the mask, does anyone <laughs> know that I obviously I'm going for wrestler but can anyone tell that it's Nacho Libre or do I have to take the, the mask off? I think in it's order- the color scheme. I think if you've seen that color scheme before, I think you can get it. All right, I want to start, Stugatz, by talking about uh, the, the cool story last night from basketball because uh, Max Struess had a fourth, a fourth quarter for all time. Yeah. He played five minutes, he made five threes, and he produced, uh, get that camera away from my nipples, please, it's a little too close. <laughs> Push that camera back. Yeah, it looks better far away. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, Stugatz, there's a number of stuff that's great in this video, and we will get to both the sad call and the happy call of this game. But let's just play for the audience that did not see this. Dallas is playing Cleveland and PJ Washington makes a surprisingly easy shot at the rim with two seconds left. And uh, let's not go to that one first. I want to show the whole shot before I show PJ Washington because PJ Washington's reaction is the funniest thing in this entire video. But I will tell you again, Max Struess last night was playing in a game, Cleveland and Dallas, and they're down 10. And in five minutes, he made five threes. Five fourth quarter minutes. He made he went five for five from three. He did it in like 45 seconds, the first four of them, because they were down 110 to 100. With three minutes and 42 seconds left, he hits the first three. Then after a turnover, another three. Then after a Kyrie three, another three. 
Then after another miss by Dallas, it's another three to get them within one, and then that three at the Stugatz, end. the scoring in this sport is so crazy that what was it that Kevin Love did against the Sacramento Kings a couple of nights ago? Was it 19 points in 15 minutes or 19 Something points? Something like that, And yeah. seven rebounds in, in 15 minutes. So Struess makes five, Struess, th- five threes in the fourth quarter. And let's just play the ridiculousness of this last stretch here. Leave it to inbound, just to the left of the Cavs bench. All we need Leave is the deflection. Pass deflected by Mobley, but grabbed by Doncic. Doncic bounced underneath the PJ, and he laid it in with 2.6 to go. Cavs out of timeout. Struce into Mobley. Back to Max. Half court shot. Good! Good! He hit it! Cavs win! This place is going crazy! The Cavaliers had 2.6. They were out of timeouts. The rest of this is just celebrating and stuff, and I want to get to the sad call in a second, but I believe the funniest part of this is the reaction of P.J. Washington. Again, there's chaos with two seconds left. You never get the shot that Doncic got P.J. Washington at the end of the game unless everyone scatters. So he makes it at the rim, and watch this, Stugatz. He's flexing the whole way. The whole way, he's flexing down the court. Game's over in his mind. He's he's flexing. He keeps flexing. Struess's shot goes up. He keeps flexing. And then left hand to the left <laughs> ear like my father. <laughs> when he's faked the hand, the handshake, and he's pretending to run his hand through his hair. Like here, I'm shaking my hand. I want you to show. Nope, I'm going to scratch my head. I was meaning to do that anyways. Do you realize how rare it is for PJ Washington to get a flexing game-winning moment on a team that includes Kyrie Irving and Luca? He had his moment. He did. Premature flex. I mean, maybe play a little D down the court. Yeah. I mean, geez. Mm-hmm. He's flexing the Game's whole way. Game's not over. Right. Get him for you. I mean, he Struce is on fire. Left. He I let mean, Struce run right, right. by him. A while guy who's flexing. never played hoops. That's Fle- what it is. He nah. just stand there and flex at midcourt no, while because Struce runs What by happens you. is if you play defense at that point and you get a foul call 75 feet from the basket, they go to the I'm, free throw line and shoot three shots. I'm not saying you get contact with them. I'm saying make some sort of gesture in his direction. He knows you're wrong. Make him uncomfortable. Tony, you're saying leave him alone? You're saying flex. Yes, and the guy hit four attention. threes in 44 he's seconds a quarter. Tony's, Tony's right. It's 75 feet. Right. <laughs> it's three quarters of the they court away never, from the basket. Take like a half quarter. I mean. Guys. You don't defend that. How, you can't go near that man. Get a they hand in the face without fouling. Come on. They, no. Come guys, on, they man. never call that foul. And I'm not saying touch him. Until they do. I'm not saying hit him. I'm saying make one step of effort in his direction. Look, so we're watching on TV right now. So he passed it in. Nobody's supposed to be around him. He's look at the other. Look, oh, somebody, no, Luca was Luca there. Luca was there. Someone did it. There. All right, I'm just saying. See, but you're you're mad at what Luca did. All I I'm saying actually. is, do what Luca did there. You just looked at me like I'm an idiot. Like I clearly- will not allow the group of people here to take a three quarter shot and second guess the defense. Yeah. I'm not going to allow that you guys to see that sports moment and be like, well, somebody could have done something better against it. We just Thank made you, fun of PJ Washington. What are we doing here? It's the yeah. second it's longest doing. game winner in the history of the league. Yeah, the defense get, was irrelevant. But get a hand in the face. I mm-hmm. mean, call <laughs> him on the inbound. Make it the longest. Come on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just keep fouling him. Because the hand in the face works so often in NBA basketball. Schuster. <laughs> get get a hand in the face so Stugatz can be there when you get the hand in the face and he can get more of your hand in the Take in a charge. Yep. Or foul him and block, rip yep. you. Bl- block yeah. the shot. You know he's going to be charging aggressively to take a shot. Take a charge. Are we happy for Struess? <laughs> I mean, he has to shoot. Exactly uh, right. Yeah, right. And he's got to do it quick, so he's going to be running. Yep. How do Heat fans experience that last night? I know I'm a Heat fan. Oh, it's I'm just asking. I was happy for him. Yeah, me too. He fan. made the right choice, right? It's what? just great and fun. He got his money. Man, They're he's good. A, he's on a better team. Yeah. Whoa. Um, he Be is, careful. He, it's statistically he, true. Um, They're he, the two seed. They don't want to see us in the playoffs. No one is taking the Cavs seriously. Like everyone, some people say they, they like should. Boston. Some people like the Bucks. Some people say the Heat. You know what? I am going to jump on the Cavs bandwagon. Mm-hmm. How about that? 
yeah. uh, based on no facts. That's the way that you do yeah, that. I mean, uh, the two I, seed. I will say a couple of interesting things. You said two seed, but the distance between one and two in the East is larger than the distance between one and eight <laughs> in the West. Seven and a half back. So your There's argument five and means a half nothing. Than heat. Yeah. Uh, and beyond that, I would say that Cleveland was exceptional last year, and the reason no one believes in them is because they lost so soundly to your Knicks in the first round. Right. It's the reason why yeah. that team. Uh, I thought that Knicks team was going to drag the Knicks. And the reason the people believe in the Knicks this year and don't believe in the Cavs this year is that first round series is that going. When you lose to the Knicks that way, everyone knows don't trust them. Do you guys really not think the Cavs are a better team than the Heat? I believe that they were all of last year. They're but They're better offensively. They're better defensively. No, they the, have a better point the, differential by like five the, the, points a game. The, like heat how you guys think the, heat? Be, the Heat are simply going to be measured by what they've done the last four years. Yep. People still fear them because of what they've done the last four years. It's yep. not going to be a regular season measurement. Speaking of which, I want to speak about what it is that they did last night because a lot of people were enjoying. Uh, Billy, you're right. This year. Talking to crazy people. It's, he made such a sound pointless. argument. I mean, <laughs> well, no, I mean, they are over the span of this regular season thus far. The they culture, I guess. Well, no, the five and a half games better, but the culture. Most disciplined, hardest yeah. working. Yeah. Except, except, want to except all the suspensions for fighting. The last 11 that, games, they won nine of their last 11. It, no, I mean, we don't have to do No, Billy, Billy is right. Th this team is measured differently than most of them, but I would say that most of the doubt that you have out west of Minnesota, for example, who has been great, and even of Boston, who has been better than everybody, the measurement this year because of what the Heat did in the playoffs is show me in the playoffs because – we don't think the 82 games mean anything. That's fair. It's why you trust the Nuggets in the West. You do, even though they're the three seed right now. Uh, I don't uh, particularly care. You're right, Billy. Over the course of the first half of the season, it is not up for dispute. The Cavs are better than the Miami Heat. However, I believe what people were watching last night late in Portland when they were making fun of Joe Cronin's Stugatz, because last night, if you are a Miami Heat lover who enjoys hating on other teams, you got a couple of things happening. A whole lot of people were dragging the Portland GM who lost by 10 to a shorthanded Heat team last night for the quote and the story that he gave Adrian Wojnarowski. This has followed him around. This is Joe Cronin, the GM of the Portland Trailblazers, talking about how difficult he had it in trading uh, Lillard and how he was, uh, you know, ruining his future job life because his focus was eliminate the emotion, the frustration, the fatigue. And most of all, Cronin implored himself, don't settle don't let yourself settle. <laughs> and his team stinks, and all the players he didn't take from the Heat are the ones scoring all over the place. And now Lillard in Milwaukee is giving quotes to Gotts. These quotes I was not expecting to see, okay? He's sad, he's lonely, he has no life. Uh, he is saying in Milwaukee, he just goes home and refreshes uh, YouTube all the time to see if there are fresh fights uh, on YouTube. Lots and, of fights. And further, the life in your 30s, Dame. Like, that's what I do. We do also, that in please. Miami. Uh, he'd have a lot more stuff to do in Miami. But the point is, you made your bed. Now you got to sleep in it. Don't don't come to complain to me telling me that, oh, Milwaukee kind of sucks. I only do this and that. Yeah, buddy, you signed up. You've never been to Milwaukee before? I've been to Milwaukee, and I knew that. <laughs> he is saying that his Milwaukee life now, and the best thing that people will usually say about Milwaukee is that it's close to Chicago. You can get there in about 90 minutes. Yep. His life, Lillard's superstar life, he says, is going home and praying that fight hype has refreshed on YouTube with new fights. So prayer that your YouTube refreshes. And also he gives you this quote, which is not surprising, but to hear him say it out loud, him say it out loud of Milwaukee season, I thought we was going to be how Boston is right now because mm -hmm. Boston is a lot better than everybody and they're making it look easy and people still have doubts about Boston just because of what Miami did to them last year and because they lose game sevens at home. What's Dame doing about it? I mean, about being as good as Boston. I mean, they got him to be as good as Boston, to be better than Boston. And all he's doing is complaining about Wisconsin. Well, I love the state of Wisconsin. Kenosha, one of my favorite places on the planet. There's nothing to do. I mean, so what? He has nothing to do. You know what he's there to do? To do something he's never done before, which is win an NBA championship. That's what he's there to do. He's not there to party. He's not there to go to the beach. He's not there to drink. He is there for business. He is there to do something that has escaped him his entire career and that is winning 
Well, when I told you, uh, you know, you just mentioned what's he doing to help Milwaukee be like Boston. I told you yesterday that Milwaukee has one of the top five most efficient offenses in the history of the sport. They don't play any defense, and it's a problem, and that doesn't win in the playoffs. And they're still very good, but the reason they're not Boston is because they don't play any defense. Mm -hmm. Can I go back to Cavs? We'll play D. Can I go back to Cavs? He for a second, Billy was saying that we were crazy. I just texted Tom Habistro. Oh, good. He's a biased. And he said that he goes by the numbers. In a series where the Cavs are at home, the Heat would be favored. After last year's playoffs, no bookmaker is going to favor the Cavs. Okay, I'm just saying. I, I'm like, just giving you look, actual information. Right, but the that, Heat in, but the, in the month of February, the Heat had the best defense in the NBA. They won nine of their last eleven. Oh, there They're eight go. games over 500 for the second time this season after losing seven in a row, where we were all worried about their offense and their defense. Now Jimmy Butler's back, playing the most efficient basketball he's played all year. I mean, look, the Cavs are the the better team over the course of what 58 games of the regular season, sure. But Dan, you mentioned it; they lost to the Knicks in the first round last year, and until they change it, maybe they got a bit of that. Culture coming from Max Struess, but until they changed that, I, I don't anticipate. Oh, but it's not the Cavs are good because Max Struess. No, brought it's not. No, no. Billy, well, no. That's why you are. Him. Are you going to take every argument against what we're saying? Like you were just arguing yes. in favor. Are of you the not Cavs. familiar? No, with I'm Billy's asking. Yeah. No, they're asking. Better that's what you're saying. They're better they because Max Struess brought culture. He's saying yeah, that's the difference in their team. The difference in their team this year is culture. Is having a player like Max Struess available to them, who they signed for big money for a reason. And being able to to win in the playoffs is a different thing. Like this Miami Heat team, Zach Harper said it on, on his podcast a couple of weeks ago. Outside of the Celtics, he'd be least surprised to see the Heat win the Eastern Conference. And there's a reason for that. The, the regular season has not mattered in the same way for this team over the last several years. I would like to continue, and someone help me with this because I'm tired of saying it. I want uh, some sound, some device that electrocutes people around here when they use the word culture. I'm sick of hearing it. Schuster. <laughs> and I, uh, the, the reason Cleveland lost in the playoffs last year is because their front line got decimated by Mitchell Robinson. It's not something anyone saw coming. <laughs> it's not a sentence you it's, thought you would ever it, say. It, and, and so it doesn't have to do with culture. It has to do with they couldn't rebound anything, and they've got Mobley, and how can they not rebound everything? <laughs> because of Mitchell Robinson. <laughs> that's that's what happened. Like and Will it, Chamberlain. It, it, was confu- it was confusing to me how good Mitchell Robinson looked in that series. Hey, folks, it's Mike Ryan. Now, you've had the distinct privilege of knowing me for close to 18 years, and uh, you know that I've changed. A lot of my personal life has changed. I've changed uh, as a professional. I am a parent now. Uh, my level of involvement in my favorite college football program has also changed. But one thing that hasn't changed for me is my favorite beer. You know when it's real with me. I think you do anyways. And you know how much I love Miller Lite. I've loved it forever. Really. It's my favorite beer of all time. And it made all the great moments in my life all that much better. And when Miller Lite came aboard on our show, I was super stoked about it because I believed in the product. Because every time I take a sip of Miller Lite, I look around and I think, yeah. This was the right call. Times change. People like me can change. But you can always enjoy the great taste of Miller Lite. Tastes like Miller time. To get Miller Lite delivered right to your door, visit MillerLite.com slash Dan. Or you can try to find it pretty much anywhere that sells beer. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 96 calories per 12 ounces. Don Lebertard. It's been a lovely cruise. Oh, man. That, that's my out, outro. That's, uh, you know, as my casket is being lowered, Jesus. Uh, you know, I'll have been cremated a week before, but we'll do the casket thing just for show. And as my casket is being lowered. <laughs> Wait a minute. Whoa, we, we, empty we, casket? We'll say, yeah. It'll Closed? Be empty, you know, just for show. We're well, what's the redundancy there? Uh, you know, I mean, you, we're going to put on a public display. Yeah, naturally. You know. Stugats. What do you do with the ashes? Um, you You're know, going on a lovely cruise. Exactly. Maybe we'll throw them uh, over. My wife will throw them uh, overboard. I would assume. she's necking with her new husband. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats. Presented by DraftKings Fantasy Sports. Check out what DraftKings has to offer this season with Code Dan. Because life's more fun when you're in on the action. DraftKings, the crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Age and eligibility restrictions apply. Void or prohibited. See DraftKings.com for details. I'm sick of the Wisconsin slander, by the way. M- Madison's a great a great little town. Great college town. Maddie. You can hit the road, go up to Hayward. The world's largest muskie is there. It's like the freshwater fishing hall of fame in Hayward, Wisconsin. There's... 
tons of things to do in Wisconsin if you like fishing. Give me the stat of the day, please. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. The Miami Heat have won more games in Portland this month than Portland. <laughs> I mean, thanks, Joe Cronin. I want to play Damian Lillard here just talking about uh, the top five players in the NBA. See if you notice here any omissions that are noticeable or any additions that are noticeable as Damian Lillard talks about top five people he wants to play with. If you could create your own starting five, what's your team? It would be me, LeBron, Steph, Kevin Durant, and I'm going to go with Bam out of bio. <laughs> Giannis? <laughs> Was that this season? <laughs> Man, that's while he's on the Bucks. Huh. Not saying Giannis hmm, while you're on the Bucks is wild. Well, you just have is, to lie. He's played with him already. Yeah, so he's talking he's, about guys that he hasn't yeah, played he with, that he'd like to play with. We should replay that video. Already. I don't think that's what the question was. Uh, let's replay the video and see if we can trap Damian Lillard on not liking Giannis and liking Bam more than Giannis. You could create your own starting five. What's your team? It would be me, LeBron, Steph, Kevin Durant, and I'm going to go with Bam out of bio. I mean, that's it didn't say create your own starting five. <laughs> Not guys you have played with or don't hmm. want to play with huh. or do want to play with that you <laughs> don't presently you play pick with. pick Giannis, though, you have to also pick his brother. It'd be like if someone was like, what radio host that's already do you, two. What radio host do you want to work for? And I was like, Mike, Green, Mike Greenberg, Colin Cowherd, <laughs> Pat McAfee, Bill Simmons. Rosillo. And Rosillo, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I give you a hot take? The Bucks are going to be fine in the playoffs. Really? Yeah. The play, the, huh. the regular season for the NBA doesn't matter. You just... Okay. He takes every argument. No, I'm just saying it doesn't matter. You guys are dismissing the You're Cavs, not. saying they're not good. And it's like, well, they have been better in the regular season. But it doesn't matter. But defense matters. The Bucks will be fine in the playoffs. They'll play defense in the playoffs? They're going to have Damian Lillard, Lillard and Giannis in the playoffs. They'll Lillard, be fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tough one. They'll be okay. I, I'm with you. Totally. He's and right. Middleton. He's right. They're going to play the Sixers without him. The Heat made it to the like. finals as an eight seed last year. Like, the playoffs, the regular season is irrelevant in the NBA. I don't know why we put so much weight on it. Well, one other thing that is also irrelevant, because I don't think anyone's putting any weight on it. I believe that that's... Well, we're talking about it like if it matters. Well, it happens to be the sport that's going on right now. But it doesn't that, matter. That more, the most it's people outside are, of football season, Billy. Well, uh, Stugatz has a top five list of things oh, we talk about that. because it's outside of football season. He's got a number of top five lists available to him. And everything that you're saying there is fair. But when it comes to illegitimate commentary, though, and I saw this on Jessica's face. I'm not sure if I recognized it or not. But Stugatz coming out a day after, right? I, I really, I flinch every time around here. We Whatever. make fun of some city being terrible because I think of all the listeners we have in that city who are hurt by Stugatz con it. condescending their city. So yesterday, he went after all of Indiana while today saying how Wisconsin is one of his favorite places. And I simply don't believe that the words he's saying are <laughs> anything but... But flabbergasting lies, mm -hmm. uh, Jessica, I know you tend to support Stugatz in most of his stupidities, but I thought I saw in your face something that registered, my God, how can he say that with a straight face? It's the constant shitting on the Midwest for me, Dan. I support Stugatz in almost all of his endeavors, but you said it. Indiana, now Wisconsin, what next? Minnesota? I mean, listen, Iowa? I love, Ohio. I love, I love, Illinois? I love Chicago. Yeah. Great city. I love Evanston. Ah. I said I love Kenosha, one of my favorite cities in the United States of America. Indiana, I ripped on Monday. Wisconsin, I ripped a year ago when I had to go to Marquette. Okay, Billy, I see your reaction there. When you betray Stugatz, uh, now I know. <laughs> no, it's it was my Howard Dean reference it's, that it's, I made in the middle, hoping I anyone was, would catch I was, that. I thought that's what that was. <laughs> Please tell me more, Stugatz, about all the things you love about 
Kenosha. Just uh, go. That's a great city. I got to tell you, Dan, that city, the main street on that city is so fantastic. It has a mom and pop hardware store. There are tons of things to do. Great bars, great scene. What, what tons of things are there? Name to a do? bar. Uh, in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Uh, there's Sally's. Okay, check it out. Look it up. Mustang Sally's, I believe it's called. Uh, I think it's a little bit off Main Street, but you should go check it out if you're in the uh, Kenosha area. That's all I have. They have one bar. It's a small town. It's quaint. It's from another time, Dan. It really is industrial. You see all the smoke coming out of the stacks there. It's like it's all the blue. pollution, it's, all the pollution, all the smog and pollution. It's blue collar, Dan. That's Chemical. what it is. A bunch of people working hard, just trying to get through the day and pay their bills. You know, I love them. Clay's Tap. Oh, I forgot about Clay's Tap. One of the all time great bars in Wisconsin. It really is. One of my top five bars in Wisconsin. I just set myself up for you asking me. Top five bars in Wisconsin. I don't have another four. Crispy's Tavern. Oh, I love that place. I love his dyslexia. When he puts the R before the E in, tav- in tavern. Yeah, it's a tough one. But I love a good tav, if you know what I'm saying. You get some good beef stew there. You get some good shepherd's pie there. You get a couple of nice beers, you know, some good chicken wings. Great scene. They have trivia night every Wednesday. The other thing we got wrong, I got a couple of things wrong yesterday. Evidently, I left out the rat race lounge. <laughs> what a great place. Right. Drink specials every Thursday night. I mean, it's amazing. Great jukebox. They have a cigarette machine in there. They do. Old school. <laughs> I can't argue with this because I think I think Chris is just reading him. He is. The bars I mean, I'm watching. I'm, all of the things you got is what are you talking about? about the rat probably race? true. The rat they race lounge has a cigarette machine. I'm, just, yeah, I'm yeah, watching yeah. Chris Cody. Been there. Look up everything, and and I believe he also emailed or texted Stugatz a menu from a local tavern. <laughs> <laughs> I love cheese curds. <laughs> Charlie's 10th hole, Dan. It is fantastic. It's a nine-hole golf course. Usually the bar is the 19th hole. Go f*** yourself. They have the 10th hole. Today's episode is powered by Venmo and PayPal. Look, no matter how your favorite team did this season, there's still one way to feel like a winner, and that's with Venmo and PayPal. That's because you can choose to use Venmo or PayPal to add money to DraftKings in a few taps. You can even transfer your balance if you have one. So the next time you get paid back for dinner, drinks, or tickets to the game, you've got the option to put the money right back into your DraftKings account. Hundreds of millions of people use Venmo and PayPal already, and there's never been a better time to join them. Don't have a Venmo or PayPal account yet? Don't sweat it. Choose your way to pay and download the app to get started. Venmo and PayPal are not a valid deposit withdrawal methods in Connecticut or Ontario. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Don Lebertard. You got to know I'm a big uh, Colombo guy. Salute to that boy. Okay. okay, I don't think that's <laughs> proof. I don't think that's proof. Uh, I, think that, I think that no, that's a, a, I think that's a lie. I don't think that's that, salute. I don't I mean, think that is evidence. Salute to that boy. It's it suggests <laughs> camouflage. It suggests that Juju has no idea what we're talking about, um, and now is just googling it. Stugatz. I'm not googling it. My grandmama stayed in the country. I watched the Braves. I watched Colombo. I watched Matlock. I watched Andy Griffin. Yeah, uh, you said yeah. that you go to Classic. the penalty box. Damn. You tell him, take your ass to the penalty box. Call me a liar. You tell him, Juju. Back to you, Stu. This is the Don Levatar Show with the Stu Gods. Yesterday on the show, David Sampson came on and read a cease and desist on Greg Cody. It really kind of backfired on him trying to just uh, do business correctly and professionally. And a lot of people have written in complaining about just in general, all of it. I can't do any more merch store drama. Bleep the merch store. I'm so tired of hearing about the merch store's content. I think we all need to boycott it so it'll close down. They can't still be trying to make content out of this. Who needs $40 t-shirts anyways? Rise up. Cancel the merch store. There is a new discount code at the merch store. Hee Haw 21. It's 21% off all (laughs) Vegas themed items. It is more than the Samson Sucks 20 discount of 20%. And it is live now. LevitardAF.com. That went more poorly for you than I imagine that you thought it would, right? You are over here just trying to enforce rules. And Greg Cody is uh, braying laughter in your face. I was just doing the job that you asked me to do, 
And it was not a bit. It was it was just something that had to be communicated. And it was much easier to do on the air because it's hard to reach Greg. He's such a superstar now. He doesn't take calls. He doesn't do anything but Greg Cody's show. And does he still write for the Herald? He does. I don't know if he does columns anymore, but between your show and his show, the only way to do it is on your show. But I think the bigger point is a real point. Uh, there's great stuff on LeBetardAF.com. And we just have to be clear to everybody who owns what. And Dan, you were very clear to me that you own all. Hmm. Uh, Jeremy, uh, I was not very clear to you. You and I did not have that conversation. Skipper took the merch store as soon as we came over. So to be clear, after yesterday's merch store subject being not going well, we're doing it again today. That is correct. Yep. Also, mm -hmm. uh, on top of that, Jeremy uh, was told, how about this one? He learned secondhand that they're now turning down tour dates, that Greg Cody toured it, uh, turned it down when Jeremy wanted to do it. Yeah, that's where the money's made. We've all seen from the Eras tour that you can make money right. off of touring. It's yeah. not about the merch. It's about the tours. And I'm finding out by listening to this show that Greg Cody is turning down possible money-making opportunities for us in our touring days, I'm, I'm, I'm not happy about this. It seems like Greg and Yeti are sort of creating their own business they model are, where they're yes. the hee-haw too yep. and excluding me from a lot, and I'm, I'm not enjoying that. Well, Greg is the front man. It's his band, right? He's the lead singer. He right. decides. But listen, he has to feel like he's in the mood to do a certain show. Right? Well, no. No, <laughs> we're the Hee Haw Three. We're supposed to be a unit. It's unbelievable. You think the Rolling Stones tour without Mick Jagger Correct. wanting to tour? Yep. Uh, thank you for mentioning that because we've got some Paul McCartney video that I want to play for you and the audience here about Foreigner. Foreigner has been nominated for the Hall of Fame. I introduced my wife to Foreigner recently and told her they should be in the Hall of Fame. What's Paul McCartney saying about Foreigner in the Hall of Fame? Foreigner, not in the Hall of Fame. What the. F <laughs> what was that? I'll play it again Please. for you just so that you understand more specifically. Farmer, not in the Hall of Fame? What the f? How old is McCartney? He's like 81. This is the best video I've ever seen. What does he think that noise is at the end? I don't even know what it was. Let's try it again. Farmer, not in the Hall of Fame? What the f? <laughs> Samson, foreigner in the Hall of Fame. Should they be in the Hall of Fame? Absolutely. I can't live for, is it I can't live for loving you? That's not one of their top You don't even know, Dave, so how can you say absolutely? Songs, cold as ice. <laughs> you know, but this reminds me, Dan. <laughs> guys like, guys like. Foreigner expert, huh? Guys like, like Sammy that. Sosa. Uh, guys like in. Sammy Sosa, not in the Hall of Fame. You know, foreigner, not in the Hall of Fame. What the f Was foreigner on steroids? I don't get what Jeremy's doing there. I don't know if I like it. I'd like to, uh, we'll talk about some sports business stuff, but something that I wanted to talk to you and the room about. Uh, I have thought throughout my life that Wendy's has one of the great fast food values anywhere in food. I like their fries. I like their Frosty. But now they're doing dynamic pricing, and I can't believe how poorly it's being received where during busy hours, like the Sun Pass, Dugats, in a form of gouging, they're going to raise prices. They're announcing that they're raising prices beginning in 2025. What are your thoughts there, Samson? Because the reaction to it has been very poor. Yeah, I, 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 I think that it came out. It didn't come out from a PR. It actually came out in an earnings call where they were projecting what's happening in 2025. And there were big expenses that are incurred in 24 to make all of the boards digital, all of the menu boards digital at Wendy's, because that's the only way you can have dynamic pricing. So the board had to get explained in earnings and analysts, et cetera. But let's talk about dynamic pricing. It reflects actually what people are willing to pay for a product at any given time. Ballparks have had dynamic pricing for over a decade now, and that is the difference between what used to be A-level games, some people call them gold games, and then silver games and bronze games. And the reason why that was stopped is opposing team owners did not want to be categorized by the home team as being a bronze team or a, you know, a unshiny object. So they changed it to this dynamic pricing where, hey, let the fans decide what they're going to pay for a ticket. And I think this is the beginning, not the end. It's sort of like streaming. You better get used to it. Dynamic pricing at fast food, that's not going away. Can't they just do it without announcing it? 
Because I feel like more P, like I feel like that's an easier way. The PR like of just this headline, it's just not a good look. It, they, they had to discuss it during an earnings call, and these earnings calls go public. But the rules are when you're a public company, you are forecasting, you're projecting, you're explaining, and then you're trying to get the street, Wall Street, to understand where your company is supposed to go. And so that's how it was announced. But remember, it was announced for 2025, but all the headlines are now. But by the time it happens, none of us will be will remember it. We'll just know that the fries are more during the busy time. I'm glad this is happening because you know what? It's going to make me not go to Wendy's whenever they're like, I don't know if I'll ever go to Wendy's again. I'm sorry. It's over. You'll go again. No. The spicy chicken. I, again. No. The spicy chicken I got <laughs> spicy chicken other places. I can go to Chick-fil-A. I can go to anywhere else that has spicy chicken. They should have partnered with Wemby and called themselves for six months Wemby's. Okay. They, all of a sudden, good PR. We're yeah. back. That's it. Do you think this is going to hurt their business, David? No, I actually don't, because the whole purpose is to actually get people in when it's not as crowded. And so you're actually getting more business during off times for the people who are looking for more value. And those people that go during the busy times are there because it's part of their schedule. It's part of their daily routine. And they're going to pay the extra 30 cents for fries or whatever the price is for the burger. That's the whole concept of dynamic pricing, and it has been proven over and over again to work that there are people who will pay the premium, and that's who you're catering to, pun not intended, and the people who don't want to pay the premium, let them come at 2 a.m. So Wendy's is doing what's called a reverse happy hour, so an unhappy hour. <laughs> so if you walk in and you're like, hey, I need a burger, and they're like, great, buddy, it's another two bucks, and you're like, damn, what the hell? I thought it was happy hour. No, unhappy hour, sorry. Have you ever gotten Wendy's unhappy a taxi? Hour. In New York City, during primetime hours, there's more fees. Not everything should are. be surge pricing. This is, this is, oh God, these are the issues with late stage capitalism. No, Jeremy, if you ran, Jeremy, if you ran a business, you would do nightmare. exactly what and Wendy's way, is doing. Jeremy, one second. If you ran a business, you would do exactly what it is that Wendy's is doing. This it's, is why I don't want to run a business. It's no different than the express lane on the turnpike. It's it's like, if you go there during a heat game and they jack it up to $15, I'm getting in that lane. I have a I problem care. with that, too. Right. We shouldn't be doing surge pricing everywhere. People can't afford this shit. Like, this is this a is a problem with, with, fast food, with fast food services. This is not meant for rich people. The premise is that it should be affordable. But go at 4 p.m. The CEO of Kellogg said that we should eat cereal to make up for that. <laughs> at Don't night, start with that guy, please. By the way, Wendy's at 2 a.m. is better than Wendy's at 6 p.m. Agreed. Thank you. Put it on the poll no, at, it's Levitar cheaper too. at Levitar Show. Do you like cereal for dinner? Uh, Jeremy, your outrage is the correct way to feel about Thank this. Thank you. Uh, Stugatz being pro-gouging, not surprising in any way whatsoever. Um, uh, but just, it, the, just saying everything should be cheaper is just kind of, that's okay, not what I'm saying. But it's, I mean, it's disproportionately affects poor people whose health is disproportionately affected by being able to afford that's have, right. uh, fast food. And this fast is, food's not affordable now anyways, like as it is. Nothing hey, is. It's kind of insane. Nothing like, you go is. to fast food, you get a meal for three, it's like $34. Inflation has hurt a lot of people in a lot of different ways. And this is the way that Uber and Lyft do it. Is it the future, David? It's the present. So I, I, I hear what Jeremy's saying, but they've been in, in, in changing the price of parking for playoff games since before LeBron came. During the Shaq run, the pricing to go to a Heat game changes. Playoff ticket prices are more than a regular season game that you're all calling irrelevant. So there's been this sort of pricing for premium product all the time. We're just calling it something different. And dynamic pricing, you should all love because that's true supply demand. Yeah, so, so I have I no idea how you can argue. I love that the CEO of Wendy's will get to hoard even more wealth now. Awesome. But like a like a hamburger at 4 p.m. versus a hamburger at 1 p.m. is not a premium product. It's the exact same product. Yep. Fast food isn't a premium product. If you're telling me I'm getting Wagyu beef, I'm going to pay whatever it is to get that Wagyu beef, but I'm getting whatever it is that they're giving me that I probably shouldn't be eating anyway. <laughs> it's the time, not the product. It's the affecting disproportionately of poor people and the gouging that is offensive. Well, it's like the lack of consumer protection yeah, that, well, like, companies will just continue to. <laughs> Billy, and, Billy and Tony are arguing over the I, pronunciation I, I mean, Dan, of Wagyu I'm going to go over there and, like, fly and choke slam Billy. I swear to you. <laughs> I didn't you say, say anything. I man. swear to you, Dan. Do you want the Nacho Libre costume? <laughs> Have you ever been on an airplane and had to choose a different time because there's a lower price if you take a 7 a.m. flight versus an 11 a.m. flight? Off peak, yeah. Air travel's a luxury also. Yep. I, I think that, that that's not even the 
point, though, because there there are people that think that uh, airlines price gouge and that's bad and there should be some sort of limit to it, especially because in this country, there's not really many ways to get around compared to in Western Europe, where you can take a flight for $50 somewhere or take a train for $50 somewhere. In the U.S., you're limited by your options. Yeah, obviously, it's a it's a big country, right. but so Europe is also very yeah. large. Uh, this is a it's a bad comparison. And this is besides the point. We're talking about a product that is like, you know, five dollars, four dollars. This is just a terrible decision in PR to not just say, hey, we're raising our prices, but we're going to have happy hour now. Like Tony said, we're going to do if you come between four and six, you get a dollar off your Baconator or you get a, a 50 cents off your Frosty. And instead they're like, hey, no. We're going to do dynamic pricing because we're a stupid little tech company. Would it be better? Would you, would you guys like it better if it was just all prices are up? They are. If you guys pay attention. They are. They have been. They already are. Years. I know. I'm just saying if this headline no was. No one's happy. They, if they also, fast food places also have different prices based on location. Like, so you can go to a McDonald's here and a McDonald's five blocks. And if you pay attention, it's like 30 cents different. There's different prices at every McDonald's. It's not quite what we're presently talking about, though. We're talking about this for a reason. Dynamic we're, we've got more with Samson next. Hey, folks, it's Mike Ryan. Now, you've had the distinct privilege of knowing me for close to 18 years, and uh, you know that I've changed. A lot of my personal life has changed. I've changed uh, as a professional. I am a parent now. Uh, my level of involvement in my favorite college football program has also changed. But one thing that hasn't changed for me is my favorite beer. You know when it's real with me. I think you do anyways. And you know how much I love Miller Lite. I've loved it forever. Really. It's my favorite beer of all time. And it made all the great moments in my life all that much better. And when Miller Lite came aboard on our show, I was super stoked about it because I believed in the product. Because every time I take a sip of Miller Lite, I look around and I think, yeah. This was the right call. Times change. People like me can change. But you can always enjoy the great taste of Miller Lite. Tastes like Miller time. To get Miller Lite delivered right to your door, visit MillerLite.com slash Dan. Or you can try to find it pretty much anywhere that sells beer. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 96 calories per 12 ounces. Everybody in your crew identifies as either Big Mac Burger, McNuggets, or McCrispy Sandwich. But you're the filet fish Sandwich all day. That crispy fish, that savory tartar sauce, that melty cheese, that pillowy bun. Yeah, you get it. Every time. And if you love the filet of fish right now you can catch two of the classics you love for just $6. Limited time only. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer. Single item at regular price. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. -ba -ba.